What is going on, everybody? This is the first puck drop uh, YouTube video for our NHL DFS breakdown here at Fantasy Sports Insight. I am Chris, also known as Hold the Door DFS. I am the hockey NFL coach here at uh, FSI. So if you are new to the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button, give this video a like. I'm going to have NHL content out all season and Today's format is going to be new, and if you enjoy it, let me know. If you, if you would like me to get back to just using DraftKings and looking through the, the game logs and using that screen, uh, just give me that feedback. I'm looking for feedback. I want to be, I want the, these this kind of video to be something that you come back to that you can start your builds with. Um, if you are looking for uh, you know a DFS community to get core plays for every showdown. Uh, classic slates, FanDuel, and DraftKings. Um, check us out at fsidfs.com. But let's get into this slate. Um, you see Stamkos on the cover. Uh, I don't think that means he's a lock, but I think without Kucherov and them being the biggest favorite on the slate, I think he will definitely be in play. So this is the totals and the odds page that I'm going to use. Uh, I'm, this I kind of like how this formats. Um, you have the team totals here on the left side. Um, the lightning come in with the highest, uh, implied team total at three, uh, 3.82. And then the Leafs down a little bit at 3.45 followed by the Oilers, Canucks and Canadians. So, um, in general here, it's kind of, it's kind of surprising when you don't see like the avalanche up here at home, but they are, you know, facing a pretty good defensive team in the blues. So I think that will be, um, kind of, you know, impact your decision on somebody like Nathan McKinnon. Um, or you could just look past that matchup and just know that he's Nathan McKinnon and, and it is what it is. So uh, the biggest money line favorites you see here, the Lightning are minus 225 at home against the Blackhawks uh, without uh, Jonathan Taves, um, obviously one of their main staples. You know, they weren't really that great at defense anyway, but, you know, losing somebody like him is pretty brutal. Um, Avalanche uh, minus 150 and then Maple Leafs minus 140. The highest game totals, uh, Toronto, Montreal at six and a half, Tampa Bay and Chicago at six and a half, and Vancouver, uh, Vancouver and Edmonton at six, and uh, Pitt and Philly at six. So just kind of like why I look at these kinds of things. And, and most people, providers for every sports do, do this too, but you know, you, you have to be able to know how to interpret these types of things. So you see that the, that the Lightning are minus 225 favorites at home. And then you see that their game also has a six and a half total. So, and you see that would equate to almost a four goal implied total, you know, assuming the score then would be something like a four to two score line. So you want to get, uh, you know, some pieces from the Lightning in, in, the, in this situation where you see the Maple Leafs as the second, it is slightly closer game, um, but the, t the game total is still six and a half. So it definitely has upside to get there. So not that this is the end all be all, but it's a great starting point when you are thinking about um, building your NHL lineups. And I am gonna likely in the future here have just like an NHL DFS 101 cash game. And this is gonna be part of it, like using the odds and the team totals to help drive your decisions when you're building your lineup. So. Uh, let's get into the builds. We're going to go position by position here. Um, the forward position, uh, the studs, uh, Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, and Austin Matthews. I think it's going to be a decision point for a lot of people on this slate um, at the forward position. The forward position is uh, pretty stacked and usually is when guys like this are on the slate compared to the winger position, um, just depending on who's there. But um, Nathan McKinnon at home, you know, he is uh, 8,500, the most expensive player on the slate. Uh, like I said, his team doesn't show up in the high, one of the highest implied team totals, but I do think you have to consider that um, Nathan McKinnon's goal assist equity share is so high for a team. Like even if they score two goals, there's a good chance that he got part of at least one, if not both of them. Um, and it, he, they are the second biggest favorite on the slate. So uh, Connor McDavid is the next price at 8,400. Also a home favorite. I really like him, uh, a ton. I think we know that his upside is immense. He will not be skating with uh dry sidle, at least as of now, unless something changes from now until, uh, game time tomorrow. Uh, but we'll have Nugent Hopkins who we'll talk about here in a second, uh, as one of his line mates. And we have Austin Matthews, 
uh, with a new line mate of Joe Thornton, uh, Joe Jumbo Thornton. I don't think it really makes a big impact, but um, he will still have uh, Mitch Marner to his side skating with. Uh, so again, a phenomenal math matchup. They're all at home. They're all favored. Uh, picking in between these guys is really difficult. I think that um, Matthews's shot floor had came up so much late in the season that it would used to be like, I felt like he was more goal assist dependent, but you know, it has come up quite a bit and McDavid's shot still is probably the lowest, you know, like his floor is probably the lowest of these guys. If he doesn't get um, a goal or an assist or be part of multiple uh, but I do think he's, you know, these guys are all going to be on the ice over 20 minutes. So let's get to the mid range and Braden point really isn't mid range. I, I just, I needed to, hit, to include him uh, 7,000 here on DraftKings. Um, I think he will be paired up with Stamkos on the top line without Kucherov. I think they're just going to really depend on that. Those two to really carry the load and, and, and then pair him with somebody like Victor Hedman. So I, uh, Tavares is only 6,300. It feels insanely cheap. Uh, it used to be, it felt like last year at the beginning of the year and even the year before, whenever Tavares joined um, the Maple Leafs that, you know, him and Matthews were, you know, actually scoring pretty closely a lot of slates and Tavares, you know, has that upside. We know that uh, later in the season and in the bubble and, uh, you know, or no, they didn't even make the bubble, but later in this, in our last season, uh, it just started, the gap started to become clear that it, it was wider than like just a $500 salary. And um, I do think the gap is too wide here. Uh, you know, you're talking almost $2,000 in salary uh, to somebody down like Tavares who has immense upside in a matchup like this. So I think if you're not spending up for two uh, of those guys on the left there, the studs, uh, and you're going with more of a mid range and you want to use maybe like McKinnon and then and and Tavares I'm fine with that too or you know if you're pairing somebody like Braden Point with Steven Samkos uh Couturier is more of a just a a GPP play for me you know he's got decent floor with his um just his peripherals uh shots on goal and block shots um but I don't love him it's just another decent uh mid-range option here um at 5700 which is a nice nice value so there is good value here at, at the forward position. The tough thing with the forward position is that you want to use it on the guys on the left, but you have Dylan, Dylan Strom here at, I think 3.1. Uh, let me just double check. I think it's 3.1, but he is expected to skate on line one power play one with Patrick Kane. So again, it's just like the, the, the matchup isn't great, but the equity you're getting at 3.1 is going to be amazing. Um, Danny, Danio, I think it is, or Danilo. I, I, I'm not, I'm not the king of pronunciations, but he should be on the first line for Montreal. I think about 3.9 K. Uh, Joseph is, I think min price should be on the second line for Tampa Bay and Suter is uh, somebody that they just got that who's been a stud overseas uh, should be uh, the second line for the Blackhawks as well. So you have, you have a lot of really good value. You could potentially use one of them in your utility position. Um, but if, if you're going to jam in the studs, so the lot to look at at the forward position. So let's get into the winger position, which I like less, except for there is a lot of value here as well. Um, as I mentioned, Steven Stamkos in the past with Kucherov has just, hasn't seemed like he has had the best floor. It seemed like Kucherov was just always out projecting him and outperforming him. But I do think, there's going to be a sense that he just needs to take on a bigger role. And I think uh, at home against the Blackhawks to start out the season is just a phenomenal spot for him to do that. Biggest, highest implied total, biggest home favorite, uh, stud player when he's healthy. So love Steven Stamkos here. Miko Rantanen uh, has continued to pair himself with, uh, with uh, McKinnon where we've seen uh, Gabriel Landeskog be the one to get rotated out to the second line. And that appears to be the way that they're going to start this season as well. So Miko Rantanen at 7,000 is definitely in play. Um, so, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins would be somebody that I would consider pairing with Connor McDavid at 6.9. So uh, again, I think when you're making these decisions and, and I didn't talk about this at the beginning, because I don't want to get too much into DFS strategy right now, because I want you to get the most out of this, but Correlation is really important in cash and in GPP. It's a little less important in cash because you can play for floors like shots on goal and blocks, but 
you want to capture the event happening. So instead of predicting four different events to happen and you hope to get a piece of that, you know, if Tampa Bay scores either on the power play or on even strength, you want the chance that if you played Stamkos, that you also played point and then possibly played somebody like Hedman at defender that you could potentially, you know, hit the goal and to assist in that case. Um, in cash, I, I like doing at least just pairs of two and then, and then sometimes correlating it in pairs of three. I know there's a lot of sharp players that will literally just stack an entire power play, a cheap power play that if you get that goal and you get those pieces that, you know, it all lines. So um, I think when you're deciding the studs and the winger, you kind of want to correlate them with the studs that you're picking. If you're picking multiple ones in the forward position, obviously we can't afford them all, but I uh, just make that consideration when you're building in the mid range, always like Brendan Gallagher. He's got a great shot shot floor um, can definitely get that five shot bonus and definitely would pay off at 6.3 salary. Uh, Nylander, somebody you could pair with Jonathan Tavares, Jonathan Tavares, uh, Andre Burakovsky came on a, a really well late uh, in, in the bubble last year when he got bumped up to line one with Colorado with uh, Miko Rantanen and Nathan McKinnon. So love him. I think he's only four point. Uh, let me double check. I think he's yeah. Four, 4,800. So really nice price take for him. Uh, let's get to the value here. Mike Hoffman, I think is going to play uh, for uh, the first slate here. Uh, he's only 3,200. If you knew how he played with Florida, he was, um, always moved around, shuffled around in the lines, didn't ever really get the opportunity to play with Barkov on the top line. But when he is on the ice, he wants to shoot the puck. He wants to be a scorer. He is active. And I think he's going to slot in the second line for St. Louis, probably paired with um, maybe Robert Thomas. And I'm not really sure with who the other winger will be, maybe uh, Schwartz or Perron. But I think um, Hoffman at 3.2 is a phenomenal value. I think will be extremely popular if he's playing. Uh, likely would get power play one. Uh, I saw a video of him today in the, um, in his scrimmage where he, you know, scored a goal already. So, I mean, he's already making an impression. Uh, Josh Anderson is going to be, I think on the second line for Montreal. Again, all these lines are going to be kind of subject to change. I'm, I'm basing most of them off of what they've done in practice recently. Um, he was with the blue jackets before didn't really find like the best role for himself there, but he always, again, was an offensive player, really attacking. Um, Hoglander is going to be somebody that I think will be really popular as well. 2,900. Uh, he is expected to skate with um, the top six. I'm not really sure if it's going to be line one or line two and get some uh, power play one time. Um He's going to be making, you know, his NHL career debut here. So I really like him at 2.9. Uh, Evan Rodriguez as well should be skating according to our line rushes now with Sidney Crosby on line one and also getting some power play two times. So all these guys, super cheap. There is even more value that I could be talking about here. Um, somebody like uh, Jimmy VC, who is 3,000, that could be skating on the second line with Tavares and Nylander. Um JVR is 3,200 insanely cheap. Somebody like him still might even be down in, you know, the third line, but first power play um, Cassian is 3,500 likely will be up with McDavid. We've seen that that be kind of some bad chalk in the past paying up for guys like him that just pair with McDavid because uh, if they don't get an assist, they're never seeing the puck really. Uh, so just, just, just consider that when you're building these lineups. All right, let's get to the defender position. The defender position for me as a cash guy is one of my favorite because a lot of times I'll use utility. I'll use a, a defender because their floor is so much higher than a lot of the positional players, um, especially when you get to the mid range and, and value. So, and you will see a lot of sharp players, especially in cash, use a multi, uh, use the utility position as a defender. Um, so we'll, we'll, I'll talk more about that in my DFS 101 cash game video, but just, just a kind of starting point. So my favorite defenders here, Victor Hedman, kind of keeping the Tampa Bay, uh, theme here. I love him. He is going to be, again, relied on more often now without Kucherov. I think you just, your, your studs naturally take that next step up and he is the most expensive at 6,200. He will be on power play one, he will be probably have the most ice time out of any of the defenders. And he has a great shots on goal and block floor. Shea Weber uh, is listed at 5,900. 
For some reason, he is not getting an image on DraftKings. I don't know if he missed photo day or what, but he uh, is another guy who can easily get the double-double bonus. And if you are not familiar with the double-double bonus, that is three block shots and at least five shots on goal in a game that should be high-paced with um, Toronto. Uh, so I like Shea Weber at uh, 5,900. Probably not somebody maybe I'm targeting in cash uh, because of, of – Montreal being underdogs, but somebody that definitely provides a lot of upside with those peripherals. Uh, Latang, I like as well. Uh, he kind of, you know, wasn't amazing at the end of last year. Like we didn't get the floor that we used to get from him. So I, I would take him with a little bit of a grain of salt. Maybe we just need to see that form come back a little bit, but he is in the elite spot in terms of being the power play quarterback for uh, the Penguins and just always being super active offensively. Um, Kale McCarr should be a, uh, resume his role that he took over from uh, Tyson Berry for Colorado and be on power play one. He had a phenomenal postseason. started to show that he can shoot the puck. I think when he, you know, like came on and, you know, being his first year just wasn't as active in firing the puck from the blue line. And then we saw that come on more often in the playoffs. And I think he is a great correlation play with somebody like McKinnon and Ratnan uh, mid range. Um, Darnell Nurse, I love him. I love his floor. He always is shooting, always is blocking. Again, another candidate for the double-double bonus would be a great correlation play with McDavid and Nugent Hopkins. Quinn Hughes has taken over the power play one role uh, from Edler, and Edler might honestly not be in, in, in any power play position, which is too bad because Edler is usually a cash cow for me, and I still think he can get there. I don't have him listed, but I do think I prefer Quinn Hughes's equity in the power play and just being on the ice more often. Um, you know, Edler could definitely make prove me wrong and, and, and be a phenomenal play as well. Morgan Riley is a great pairing with somebody like Austin Matthews, uh, Marner, Tavares, any of the Toronto players. Um, getting to the Valley here, we have Connor Murphy. I think he is listed at 3.8K. If I just double check here, uh, 3.8K is a great value for somebody like who is, su is super active in terms of his shots and blocks. Um, a lot of times hit just the three, had three to four block shots and would get that bonus, uh, which would likely already pay off the price tag at, of 3,800. He is going to be in the first pairing, likely will not get power play time um, as the guy at the bottom I'll talk about next, Will. Um, Ethan Bear, I love him as well. He's at 3,300. Again, somebody that just saw like immense ice time last year at the end of the year. And I think when you, when you consider these value defenders, um, if you're getting somebody that's going to be on the ice 23 to 25 minutes and they're sub 4k, it's really hard to like not accidentally get in front of two to three block shots, and maybe get one shot on goal. So, I mean, there's very select few guys that you compare to like PJ Tucker or um, Snell or, or these guys in the NBA that can play 40 minutes and put up 10 fantasy points. You know, I think you can find some of those guys here in the NHL, but I think more than not, um, that they're in there, those, those big times to be in front of the net and to block shots and, and to be a defender. So um, Ethan Bear, like at thir uh, 3,300. Um, Ruda is expected to be in a pairing with, um, and he is 2,500 dead minimum. He is expected to be in a pairing with Victor Hedman and likely to see an increased role uh, just in terms of time on ice. So I like him as somebody just as a pure punt flyer. And then you have Adam Boquist here at the bottom who kept showing like signs that he was going to be this great uh, play in DFS, but never really came to fruition because the ice time was down so low. So I still think, you know, there's reports that he's going to be listed and play in the first power play unit, um, but still might be in the third D pairing. So then, you, you know, you're, you're, you're getting the power play opportunities, but you're losing it on the other end where he's not on the ice and even strength very much. Um, so I think, you know, he's cheap enough that you can definitely take that into consideration, but I wouldn't be married to that at all. So um, hopefully this helped you build. And, and if you liked how it was formatted and this gives you a spot to start your builds for your lineups, then uh, give that feedback in the comments and, and throw it a like, throw a uh, subscribe, whatever, whatever you want. And if you want more of our core content here at Fantasy Sports Insight, check us out at FSIDFS.com. Thanks for listening. And I will see you back tomorrow.